Uh, let's go to Guy in Fort Worth. Guy, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Guy? I'm doing very well, Mr. Roberts. It's good to speak with my political priest again. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> you know, we we live in the day and age. Uh, a while back, you had you had a segment about what offends you, right. and I wanted to rehash that. Sure. You know, me being conservative, I'm virtually unoffendable, but we we live in a day and time of the hyphenated American. And I'm just wondering, when does America get to be a country where you're from? Well, what do you, what, 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 do you, what do you mean by that? When did it get to be a country where you're from? Right. Meaning we have these, these commercials on TV that, that, that talk about test your DNA, oh, see where you're yeah. from. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we just, we have, again, we have the hyphenated American, Mexican American, African American, New Zealand American, and in some cases, Texan American. Um, and for those of you about to call me a hypocrite, that was a joke. No, so, I, 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 those, those commercials. And you just hit on one of my pet peeves. You know, I just found out I'm 187th uh, Native American. I want to know my exactly. roots. And I'm thinking to myself, what difference does it make? What's in your DNA? I mean, unless it's a medical procedure, who cares? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, how, and how is that determined? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a big wool being pulled over people's eyes to say, well, you know what? I got my results back and. I'm 32% Irish and 18% Italian, and I just I don't understand that. And it, I just wish that that we could say, truly say, that we are Americans and remove the hyphen, uh, take it away and do it into oblivion. Great point, guy. And here's here's what happened. You know, one point in time. It didn't matter that you were 136, 32nd uh, this or that or the other thing. Or, you know, uh, I think somewhere in my uh, in my genealogy, you know, people go nuts over that stuff, too. I guess as a hobby, it's, it's okay. But um, what happened was liberalism ran amok. And, uh, you know, uh, you, one galvanized voice is very, very tough to control. Very tough to mm -hmm. control. Uh, I mean, if you look out over a sea of of uh, voters and they're all Americans. They may differ on political party, but they are all Americans at the end of the day. Um, that's very tough. But if you divide yeah. and conquer and you divisions come in many ways, not just political, but ancestral, all kinds of ways. Um, th this whole thing about, well, I'm, I'm African American. Most people I talk to say they're black. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. They never were from Africa um, or some were. Uh, you know, I've got a good friend uh, who uh, whose parents own paper mills in South Africa. He sounds like he's from England. Uh, but, you know, uh, aside from the accent, everybody in America should be Americans. When you start breaking down across ethnic lines and ancestral, ancestral differences, you know, that's all political ploys. Those are all ways to separate people. Saul Alinsky comes yep. to mind. Absolutely, Saul Alinsky. Absolutely. Uh, Guy, very good call. I appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. Carol in Burleson. Carol, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Carol? I'm doing just great, Rick. I'm glad to get in to talk to you and share what I know. Okay. Okay. Uh, my daughter is involved with the education system. She's a consultant. And through her, I'm learning things. And I don't, I don't think you guys were aware of that in Texas – well, first of all, in Austin, there's a school safety center. Right. And she does some training of police officers that work in the schools. So in Texas, we have school resource officers, and they all carry guns. And like at the Burleson Centennial, the police car sits right out front. I think that's a big deterrent to having some kid come in and start shooting at the school. Well, um, there's actually a National Association for School Resource Officers, and I, I think okay. that's fine. Um, I think given the, the climate we're in right now, uh, I would like to see uniformed police officers in schools for the hours of operation until the dust starts to settle on this. Because 
um, you know, people are trying to keep it alive. This, this re here's what's happening. The Democrats are manipulating and orchestrating these walkouts, these marches, this, you know, no, you never hear any solutions coming out of this. You only hear government help me, government save me. Well, that's exactly what the government's been after for the last 25 years is, is to raise up generations of people that don't look to the city or the county or their own neighborhoods, but instead look to the government for help. The government can't keep you safe in a school. No, it, I, th I think this is a bit of a deterrent, and the officers that are in these schools are in uniform, and they do carry their guns. And then something I learned today is she was telling me that in Dallas, Dallas ISD has their own police department and has a separate chief of police than the Dallas Dallas City Police. And I, I didn't know that, so I didn't know if you guys knew that or not. Yeah, it, the school resource officers are fine, and I, I support them. Um, but in this situation, in the climate we're in right now, um, at least in the short term, I think uniformed police officers, well, first of all, Dallas needs to hire about 800 more officers. And then on top of that, start paying them something uh, where they don't have to move to get a living wage. Uh, after we do that, uh, maybe we can put a uniformed police officer inside schools, for, I don't know, from uh, you know 8 to 3 or whatever it happens to be.